X party, it was an X party order. It was for extension of stamp. And this portion is take it up uh, tomorrow. But I am protected till oh. today because they will come for eviction today only. No eviction meaning what? Has they, Hello. Has they since you have not filed the undertaking, they are yeah. they say, has uh, the execution proceeding started? Yeah, there was the execution proceeding started. Am I allowed to me protect me tomorrow? Tomorrow can come, Mr. Mr. You come on Friday, Monday, Tuesday. This. And to have packet. Till 31st of December. Ah, and you have not filed the undertaking within the prescribed time. Please, Mr. We are taking up this matter. We are treating this matter to be on board upon being mentioned by learned counsel for the petitioner. Petition. So, uh, let the delay in filing the undertaking be con uh, uh, for nine days be condoned. The urgency of the file, against of the matter. Please oblige. Eight zero five. this is a bail matter. It was listed on the. Eighteenth of October. Yes, Malaj, it's showing. Not to be deleted. Not to be deleted, Malaj, My only difficulty is that my ladyship is sitting in a special bench on eighteenth. You see on that day. Malaj. Yeah, I have a lordship's liberty to mention. I know your lordship's going to approve of this, but we've been trying to have it on the mentioning list. It hasn't got listed. No. I'm only praying for the man not to be deleted. It's already showing tentatively for the 13th. Not entertaining, but okay. I'm so grateful. With the kind permission of my lord, may I make? I am seeking leave to circulate a letter for adjournment in a matter list. Oh, why, why leave is that? It is listed before the bench headed by Honorable Justice uh, Divedi Mallor. Yes, but why? Not listed in court number 16. Why leave is required to circulate a uh, letter? Required. Permission is required, otherwise a letter for adjournment is not accepted, Mallor. Oh. But every, Since it is coming in no the other, uh, hearing list. Coming tomorrow. Your Lord, may I mention an item which is getting deleted repeatedly, my Lord? No, you have to circulate the letter now. No, 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 no further. I have an item which I have circulated a letter to file it. So when it when it's called on, the Yesterday's matter 61. 61, yes. Continuing. Uh, Item 61. Now, Mr. Salve, yes. it's a pleasure to hear you, but uh, all your colleagues are waiting. How long would you take? No, I have a brief idea so that we can arrange our. I've got the note ready. Okay. What I need to do is, I there are some uh, judgments which have been relied on since a lot of people are uh, so, hearing the matter. Can we say? About one hour or about an hour. Huh? I'll, I'll finish. I'm finishing one hour. So I'll come at one hour. Waiting for my turn for the last three days. Yeah, yes. And for a matter of not where the issue is only not whether notice should be issued or not. And I think we have passed we, that stage. Uh, I'm sorry, we haven't passed that no, stage. The stage is that the court said they'll hear me. Raising his voice won't help. So you don't have to I'm not raising my voice. I'm saying it will be clear. But it's not so. <laughs> yes, and the lawyers will decide you know, whether notice is issued or not. That is how you know, it started, and that's how I want to. Friend appears for a caveat, uh, <laughs> and he's worried about whether notice will go. No, I'm not worried. I'm saying it should not go. Okay. This is a gross case. But I will address your lawyers. Do not invite her. File caveat? Yes. On behalf of the state, there are two respondents. Under which provision? There is a provision yes, for file. Just wanted. Because I personally checked the Supreme Court.
court rules and I didn't find any in criminal. SLP criminal, can you file? Yeah. There are orders, but I can show them. I'll bring it if necessary. It's all technical, but just I follow them. For my if necessary, but I, I'm I'll show you. I appear for one reason. Permit you to argue, no doubt about it. Dreadful, not, but I will also look at it. Mr. Lordship has mentioned it. We him notice probably if we allow you to argue. Lord, uh, I mean, that's a. I, I must say this. If surely after hearing this matter for so long, if your lordship feels it doesn't call for a notice, I'll sit down right now. But if it, if your lordship feels it calls for consideration, I mean, if my friend is going to ask for an adjournment, then we might as well get nothing. Well, let us uh, preempt the courts. I have not asked for any adjournment. Exactly. I am saying it should be dismissed. That's what I will mean. not endeavor to tell the court. That's, that's fine. Right. But it can't be at the end of it, then you say, all right, then I'll file a reply. So then, then it, no, counter affidavit is already filed. Not no, 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 it's not filed. Oh. If there is no notice, but how will there be a counter? No, but what was the, that was I, before the... That's before I'm, the High Court. I only do not want to say, Lordship has not ask me a question. I'm only saying, if at the end of one more hour, my friend is going to say, oh, no, Lordships have heard me fully, and a Lordship feels requires consideration, then will he ask for an adjournment or will he go on? That's something a lot of people have to go. Yeah. I don't want to that. See what we These kind of things one shouldn't. Uh, I think they are far too serious rather than for instance. How not originally con con conceived under Article 136? That is possible. Neither, neither will not be possible to see the court. Interim relief. No, it has evolved yeah. through practice. Correct. Lord, neither in the civil procedure court is there a provision for notice. It has been evolved, Lord, in the last 30, 40 now, years. Been it has happened. from evolution now reached a it has evolution. A, it has become a law. So you first we come, you first have, you hear a matter three days whether your lordship will issue notice, then you hear it for six days after you issue notice so to grant you. What? And then the appeal will ask for two words. You can correct us if wrong. Initially it was either granting leave or of course yes, dismiss. Of course. I think that's with respect, yes, for not. And then this notice process came because if, if an interim order is so, only fair you hear the other side. Otherwise, I remember, in fact, uh, back in the day, the rule, your lordship, but that's why I introduced the rule, saying, if there are a counter in the High Court, please file it before us. So we want to know what the other side's case is, and then we decide. So ultimately, what is it? Your so lordship, the entire record is with us. So entire record is here. No need to as such. Exactly. Attorney. And in a criminal case, where is the counter affidavit? No, that's now the procedure of this court, that your lordship grant, if we go back to the old days, then follow the full practice. That the Lordship grant an identity order, grant leave. There was no need to hear the other side even for identity. But normally, we take into consideration only those documents which are which were already produced before the High Court. Oh, agreed, right. agreed. Things have changed over the years. People give documents across. All this is happening. So, if you have a restatement of the law, then we should go back to that position. Where, you know, there is no counter affidavit, record of the court, all that. Any, is there. May I not start? Start to finish 60 minutes. I have a lot for your Lordship's assistance. Put my thoughts down in a piece of Thanks. It's become five pages. This is spacing. And it's, it looks big because the font is large and the spacing is large. No, that's okay. That's uh, okay. It's, it's a relief on the eye. It's good yeah. for us. I've covered most of this ground. Section 17A inserted relates to the procedure by which an inquiry, inquiry, investigation into an offence is conducted. It is a procedural provision which does not the obligation or impair any rights of a citizen. Provision would thus be retroactive in the sense it would apply in future in relation to all inquiry to investigations being conducted. Such provisions have loosely been characterized as retrospective. Strictly speaking, provisions that operate in the future but anticipating facts are in that sense not retrospective. In fact, Manot, this is uh, well settled. If you rely on, if, if a situation is an antecedent fact, you know, the famous three judge bench decision in DCM relied on the English principle of construction, where for the first time company deposit rules were brought in. And the argument was this can't be retrospective, it can only apply to deposits received here. Just dear Desai Manot, uh, in this court, took the view that no, it will apply to deposits here. Not to deposits received here. So it is not retrospective. Merely because a law for its prospective operation relies on antecedent facts. 
doesn't make it retrospective. We all come from that colonial sugar. Colonial sugar. Because the principle, as your audience know, is this. It is not that an empire already registered prior to 18 is invalidated. That would be retrospective. But if after today you commence or initiate any inquiry or investigation, this, this section will apply. So it is not retrospective. It is prospective. By necessary corollary, probably a next question which would arise according to me. If you say that uh, this is a procedural and uh, no, no. would it confer any substantive right on the accused? The right? If, if not followed. Yes. The right, that's that's a very important Then point. that Garikapati yes. principle. This court has held sanction provisions, although procedural in nature, are a protection available to the accused and have to be rigorously followed. In which judgment? Yes, but I'll give those cases. In fact, in order, your options have allowed appeal saying sanction will not. Well, if you see in the context of section 19 and uh, 19. Yes, yes, your lordships have invalidated it. Yes, invalid. Set aside convictions. Yes. Not, not the, in Tada, for example, a serious thing like Tada, my, my, one of my lords judge. The lordship has set aside the conviction. Then, and I'll, I was wanting to show, I'll be it's showing that time. judgment also because it deals with the other aspect. What if there are other offenses which are not covered by a provision which requires sanction? Then, see. what your lordships have take, held is, what yeah. your lordships have held is that if the other if the other allegations are ancillary in character, then everything goes. And if the allegations are substantive in character, then they may remain, but the Tata goes. So approval, a sanction has always been considered, absence of prior uh, sanction has always been considered fatal to the inquiry. And all that is required is you go now, you get the governor's sanction, you register the affair. It's not that my lord, the uh, accused gets a discharge or is acquitted or uh, author of or acquittal apply or nothing of the sort. It's a safeguard. You haven't crossed this. Up till now, whatever you've done is illegal. You go get the sanction and you register the FIR and you're back on track. It's not that the offenses uh, are uh, eviscerated. So, substantive right, not in the sense that you get a, uh, go as they say, get out of jail free pass. <laughs> That's not what happens. Only this inquiry comes to it. I'm not para five. It is conducted prior to the insertion of the provision not stand invalidity. That would make it retrospective. In the sense, in that sense, the provision retrospective, however, all inquiries, it should be, pro in that sense, the provision is not retrospective. I'm sorry, there's a typo there. Okay. Maybe, please, I'm so sorry, please add. Provision is not retrospective. However, all inquiries or investigations commenced by a police officer after the insertion of 17A would be governed by the provision. The general principle of the said provision being retroactive can be displaced by express language. So, but this is, these are only general rules of interpretation. Parliament could have limited the application of the provision to inquiries or investigations commenced in relation to offences committed after the insertion committed after the insertion of the provision by adding the words hereafter, after the words into any offence alleged to have been committed by a public servant. I made this point yesterday, just for convenience, I put all of them down in writing. The legislature was consciously made a provision applicable to a person who is or was employed. The investigation to past offences is clearly visualized by the act. Words of limitation as set out are conspicuous by their absence. 17 AC provides that no inquiry or investigation shall be committed into an offence alleged to have been committed by a person's, by, by a public servant without the previous approval, in the case of any other person, of the authority competent to remove him from his office at the time when this was alleged to have been committed. This is intrinsic evidence to suggest that the provision was intended to apply to offences committed in the past without any limitation. The second feature of this provision is that it applies to an inquiry or investigation into an offence alleged to have been committed by a public servant. The focus of the provision is thus affirmed. The person who has, it, it extends to one another. I'm sorry, that word is a typo. The focus of this provision thus extends to the person who has committed the offense and not merely the offense. I've made this point yesterday also. It applies 
wherever the offence relates to any recommendation made or decision taken by such public servant in the discharge of his official function. Private acts of a person not in the capacity of a public servant acting in discharge of his official duties are not protected by this provision. The phrase any recommendation made or decision taken in discharge of his official function or duties was inserted to limit the need for prior approval to official acts of public persons and not acts in their private capacity. Suggestions referring unto or otherwise indulging in acts which constitute an offence under the act are not acts in discharge of official duty is misconceived. Such an interpretation would render the provisions issues. But if you say, that's what the High Court said, oh, but uh, abusing your power is not official duty, but then this, this act applies if you abuse your power. So, to say that if you committed an offence under this act, it is not in discharge of official duty. So then, Malad, then very, very 17A. The interpretation of this provision in the concurring judgment of Mr. Joseph in Yeshwan Sina, it, it is respectfully submitted, lays down the law authority. Statement of objections. Statement of objects. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, Malad. This full of typo. Statement of Raised uh, supports the interpretation provision or designed to protect public servants from motivated prosecution. Did you take help of Dragon? Or? No, my lord. I, I <laughs> did, did, did the steno as for a change. I used a stenographer because I didn't have my uh, Dragon uh, laptop. Otherwise, that's very accurate. But otherwise, I do all my own dictation and typing. But yes. I, Dra I Dragon also checks the spelling and grammar rules. Yes, it does. Then, my lord, the standard operating provision I have of a procedure I have shown you a lot. Then, the jurisdictional act, etc., they are all judgments which are all here, my lord. So, only to put, put it all in one place. And in para 17, I have said, my lord, the two areas the high court suffers, judgment suffers from. That, my lord, is just the points which I made yesterday. Now, if I may quickly, my lord, go ahead. I showed your lordship the SOP yesterday. The parliamentary debates are of some assistance. Just one second. Where where was the SOP? Uh, which volume? The SOP, my lord. Yes. Is uh, which volume is it? Volume five. So it's in a okay, IF separate, uh, separate volume. Volume five. No, no, not uh, not five is by the government. It is I eight two one one zero. I think it's I eight two zero seven one one zero. Yes, in that this annexation. This had read yesterday fully. And yesterday, Mallard, I mentioned the object of this law is in fact to strengthen the law of corruption, but also make sure at the same time it is not uh, abused. And please see page three of well, at, the, at the foot of the page. There is a small page in it, page three of ninety-nine. So this is also a reflection of the honourable prime minister's comment, uh, commitment towards zero tolerance. You will recall that. Oh, which document? I'm so sorry. Parliamentary debate. The first part deals with uh, the new offences which have been created. At the foot of page 3, similarly, the minister introducing, before proceeding against any officer, prior permission which was earlier available, only at the level of joint secretary and above, is now available at all levels. The permission has to be obtained within three months.
this was what I had manufactured. In fact, your lottery principle. First, he says two main aspects have been taken of making corruption law more stringent, active bribery, and at the same time ensuring enough safeguards for those public servants and officers who are performing their duty with honesty, so that unwarranted intimidation does not kill the initiative. So we have introduced the bill, the provision of a timeline for prosecution, etc. What is this? Members. Then, Malak. I mean, this is of limited assistance only to show that uh, this is the single line directive which, was, which has now been legislated. But not, I just need to deal now quickly with the cases. Yashwan's case, your author had seen yes, relevant no, no, no. paragraphs. We are discharging the board now. Till lunch. Till lunch we discharge. Till lunch. lunch. Then we will take the regular list. Yes. Well, Lord Yashwan's judgment, quickly, your Lordship, just, just to remind Lordship of the passages I cited 2020, Volume 2, SCC 338. Give this but the compilation, I believe, was handed over. Yes. Which compilation? There are so many of them. It says judgment index at the top. I believe it says judgment index. We found it. We have it. Your Lordship. Yes, we have. Yes. In this. Page uh, 50, yes, Mr. Justice Joseph's judgment. Page, it's print page 390 in this compilation, it's page 54. In fact, last line in Tara 53. <laughs> No, compile page 54. 53, actually, if, I, if you're not trying just pick it up from 53. So the dates of this. And at page 53, a lot of money. The petitioners have not sought the relief of a preliminary inquiry being conducted, even assuming that a smaller relief than the one sought could be granted. So the argument was if I ask for an investigation, you can always direct preliminary inquiry. There is yet another seemingly insuperable obstacle. In the year 2018, the Prevention of Corruption Act. Here, refer to was brought into force. Thereafter, 17A new section was inserted. In then, Marat Para 117. In terms of 17A, no police officer is permitted to conduct any inquiry or inquiry or conduct any investigation into any offense done by the public servant, where the offense alleged is relatable to any recommendation made or by the public servant in discharge of public functions without previous approval in the area of the authority competent to remove the public servant from his office at the time when the offence was alleged to have been committed. With respect of, in respect to the public servant who is involved in the case, it is clause C which is applicable. Unless, therefore, there is previous approval, there could neither be neither inquiry nor inquiry nor investigation. It is in this context apposite to notice that the complaint has been filed by the petitioner and writ petition 
was moved by the first respondent. CBI is done after 17 April. Inserted the complaint is 4th October. Para 5 sets out the relief which is sought in the complaint is to register FR under various provisions. 6 and 7 of the complaint are relevant in the context of 17A, which reads follow. It says we are aware. Recently, 17A has been brought by way of an amendment to reduce requirement of prior permission of the government for investigation under the prevention. We are also aware that this will place you in the peculiar situation of having to ask the accused himself for permission to investigate a case. We realize your hands are tied. We request you to at least take the first step of seeking the permission of the government under 17A for investigating, under which the concerned authority shall convey decision within three months, which may be for which may for reasons to be recorded in writing be extended for one. Therefore, the petitioner that filed the complaint knowing, fully knowing that 17A constitutes a bar to any inquiry or inquiry or investigation, unless there was previous approval. In fact, a request was made to take at least the first step of the permission under 17A. The writ petition was filed on uh, 24th October and the complaint is based on non-registration. There is no challenge to 17A. Under the law, it's both on the date of filing the petition and even today, 17A continues to be on the statute book and constitutes a bar to any inquiry or investigation. The petitioner themselves in their complaint seek uh, request. But when it comes to the relief, there was no relief claim. Even proceeding to the complaint and FIR must be registered as it purports to disclose cognizable offenses. And the court must so direct. Will it not be a futile exercise having regard to 17A? In fact, what the High Court judgment, which says constitutional court's powers are not impaired, doesn't seem to be correct in the light of this. I am therefore of the view that although though otherwise petitioners so and so may have made out a case having regard to law actually they are in the and more importantly 17a in a review petition petitioner cannot succeed however it is my view that the judgment sought to be reviewed would not stand in the way of the first respondent from taking action on the complaint in accordance with law subject to the respondent obtaining under 17a of the act <coughs> now the offense is mallard here your Lordship, recall that I had shown page 23, relate 2016. The first A was to constitute a special investigating team under the supervision of the court with the following mandate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then Malat B, to terminate slash cancel. The intergovernmental agreement with the government of French Republic signed on 23rd September 16 for the purchase of 36 other Rafale fighter jets and, and to give direction to the respondent to lodge an FIR and report the progress of investigation and to restore the earlier deal for the purchase of 126 Rafale fighter jets, which was cancelled on June 15 by the government of India to bar assault, Reliance Aerospace, etc. etc. So these were all events of 2016. And this in my respectful submission authoritatively lays down the law. Now, Tejmal's judgment doesn't strike a different tone as is sought to be conveyed. It's in this very uh, paper book, page 55, uh, page 56. Para 4 of the judgment says, that the FR has been quashed mainly on the ground the investigating authorities failed to obtain previous approval of the government under 17A before registering. Then 17A is set out. Then please see para 6. So that argument was on a wrong factual premise. In this case, FR was filed on 1st January 2018 before the provision came to force. The main question involved in the appeals is whether 17A would apply to an investigation which commenced before 17A was enacted or enforced. But this, in my respectful submission, that would make it really retrospective. If it stops an ongoing investigation in its tracks. 
it's a cardinal principle of construction every statute is prospective unless it is expressly by necessary implication made to have retrospective effect my lord this proposition in fact it appears that council argued that this is the correct position the other line of cases was not shown to the case what there is a presumption against retrospective provision should ordinarily be made to make a statute retrospective presumption may also be rebutted as held in akram ansari which has been referred to and relied upon in the judgment in k r ramesh the device of a legal fiction can be used to introduce retrospective generally it is considered that every statute dealing with substantive rights is prima facie prospective unless it expressly or by necessary implication is made retrospective but at this statute doesn't deal with any rights the police doesn't have a right to investigate it has a duty to investigate it's not the right of a police officer then malot please see para 11 although on the facts of this case and malot that's why your lordship saw in my written note i have taken that point if you say that a ongoing investigation commenced prior stopped in the tracks then you are making it retrospective i would malot in my respectful submission i would in in my read 17a applies at initiation not start something today if you have validly started something before the section came to play then the section doesn't stop now in this case they said yes fir may be registered but now that the section has come stop the investigation your lordship said no in that context in para 11 it but that shevri judgment uh what was the ratio that yes please see shevri once again malot so that's a very important i'll show my lot a passage from gpc He puts it very well. We can now a lot cite deep things. Yes, I think he is. He is no more. Uh, that was given up, leaving on her <laughs> for a long time. The area of that practice was: if you are alive, you may change your commentary. <laughs> Thank you. So far, yes, it's, Indian it's, context. It's one of the finest books on interpretation. Yes, still very authentic. Right, I had the privilege of assisting uh, Professor Jawel in updating D. Smith, and I noticed some out some very exceptional propositions of Indian law. They say we're overtaking English law. I'm not aware. There are many such judgments. Check. It was based on an article written by somebody. They had picked it up. I said, "Please delete all this." <laughs> Adding proportionality to witness very principle. Yes. We guess it is. No, but it, it went. Our, uh, it went. It went way beyond that. And I was wondering where is not any judgment. Maybe I have not kept track. Supreme Court judgment. What's going wrong? <laughs> 